So we're just putting these two against each other just to understand which one wins in terms of the grind consistency. In terms of the final cup that you get, everything we're gonna keep the same. We're just gonna keep the grinders different. So we'll grind three times from this, we'll grind three times from this. We'll pass those three plus three six through the groove. I'm gonna explain you what groove is. We'll see the consistency and also we're gonna brew the cup. So we'll do the groove test and we'll do your taste test as well. This video is gonna help you to understand according to your passion, hobby, interest or where you wanna to move towards what kind of grinders should you be looking out for and what is the point of looking at those grinders because let me tell you one thing like when I was starting out I was using this grinder I did not mind because that A uh, I didn't want to invest too much in the big grinders and B it was easy to just get it off the shelf from anywhere so depending on anybody your passion hobby interest it'll help you make a decision as to which grinder you should go for EK43 Malconic came out with this grinder is actually EK43 T T for say titanium let's call it that but not the titanium burrs inside EK43 came out a really beautiful solution that is burr which is shaped in a different way usually you'll see grinders having burrs this way in EK43 you've got it this way alright that makes a huge difference because somebody had told me long back about this the difference that usually it makes is that the gravitational pull makes it much easier for the coffee beans to grind and since the burrs are like this and the beans are coming from the top and there's less of friction that is one of the points which Malconic was trying to make apart from that it's a it's a couple of lakh rupees machine it has got in style from 16 to 0 it can do espressos very easily it can do cold brew grind size easily it doesn't get heated up so easily which is a very very important point And then we've got this masala grinder with us right now today. It's an actual coffee grinder. Yeah, I mean, sort of, yeah. But yeah, this is a coffee grinder. So you see there'll be two chambers over here. Here is basically where the coffee gets captured, the ground coffee. And you'll see these burrs, which you basically, with clicks, you can move around. Uh, everybody who's got a commandante or who have been using your home grinders, uh, you know what it is. But, you know, you can just adjust the grind size for those people who haven't seen this. You can adjust the grind size by moving this clockwise or anti-clockwise. This is the place where you put the whole beans. This gets fixed over here and if I don't plug this in, you will be able to see how it grinds. So when you move this around, the coffee beans are getting ground between the two birds, two discs, and the coffee is getting crushed slash ground and being captured in the compartment. Okay, it's important to know that we are not getting paid by anybody whatsoever. This video is not a sponsorship for Malconic. It's not a sponsorship for Groove. All the equipment that we are using is just something that we've got and we are making the most of it. We've got two set of coffees in front of us. It's the same coffee, same dose. That's 20 grams that we are taking. And here is the Groove. And I'm going to explain what exactly Groove does. You've got two filters. One is the 1000 micron, if you can see over here. And then you've got a 600 microns uh, below it, all right? So the coarser one on top, finer one below. That's your 600 microns. So just imagine there's a mesh with bigger holes, all right? And below that, there's a mesh which has got finer holes, all right? What we are trying to do is, what we are doing is, we're gonna grind the 20 grams of coffee and we're gonna put it in the sieve. So on the top of the uh, coarser or the thicker or the bigger hole sieve, we're gonna place the coffee on top and we're gonna shake it. At the end of it, we're gonna calculate three things. One, how much of the coffee is there on the top of the sieve. Second, on the finer of the sieve, how much coffee is there? And third, at the bottom most, how much the fines have been migrated? So there'll be three readings that we'll get. Most probably, my bet is this grinder will have a lot of variation because we're gonna do the same thing three times. Chica 
All right, we ground the coffee. I already know the results, but let's see. So this is your not bad, yeah, not that bad. I know. Actually, not that bad, though. Huh? That is what I'm telling it. Yep, yep, yep. It's actually not that bad. If you see, it looks also very different. I mean, but uh, the fire, fire, fire. <laughs> so we got twenty grams over here, uh, and now. we will be passing it through the first mesh actually first not passing through the first mesh i'm just going to place it on top of the first mesh and here it is so this is how it will look all right so now you will get an idea of what i am talking about i'm just going to see it a little bit <laughs> half of it is already down is what i feel <laughs> half of it is always down is what i feel so here is what we are doing right it's actually one <laughs> It's actually tough. Look, <laughs> this is how you actually do it. You also measure the time of shaking the crew. So here it is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place the. We start start measuring. So the first that is a thousand micron that is a coarser grind is. We've got ten grams of coarse coffee. Six grams and here is here is four grams. So that's what I was talking about. The groove does. We're gonna do the same test now with the EK. So we had ten, six, and four, right? So imagine this inconsistency in just twenty grams from this grinder. It is not going to brew your coffee as beautiful as you want it to be. Thousand is twelve. So this is six. The second and this one is two. So you see the spread like fine migration, which is like a super important point. The inconsistency of the grinder does not always mean that how coarse or how many boulders are there in the grinds grinder, but majorly it means. how many small finer particles that it does it generate over a period of time so which is not good for the coffee this shows first of all in the same pack of 15 15 grams you got a huge variation and you got too much of coarseness and too much of fine migration in this grinder whereas the fine migration in ek43 is not much high and it's evenly spread as a ratio the next test that we are doing is that if we grind the same coffee 15 grams in this again would it give the same number with the same seal and again for the same thing all right so we're doing 20 20 grams each after a lot of hard work through the hand grinder we ground some coffee there you go so we're going to keep the recipe super simple it's not about the recipe over here it's about this brewing two cups identically so that there is no variation or variable change while doing the coffee so we've taken 20 grams 20 grams one is from the hand grinder one is from the ek43 and we're going to keep it very very simple after every 30 seconds we're going to add 60 ml of water 90 degrees celsius we'll start Okay, so we're gonna do a blind tasting and uh, see which one wins. I genuinely don't know, and I genuinely hope the samples have been kept very sanely and nicely now. So yeah, I'm gonna taste this. Okay, uh, so this coffee is again soft, has got a little bit of note of bitterness towards it, which is not that bitter as such. It's okayish. Try this. This seems to be over extracted for some reason. Uh, this has got a papery taste towards it. It's got a musky papery taste, a little bit. Uh, 
but I'm gonna let it cool down and see how it tastes like again. Not bad. Apart from that particular taste that it is giving, aftertaste that it's giving, um, this seems to be a good coffee. It has got a little bit of acidity around it because now my teeth have started tingling sort of. Uh, and uh, again, it's pretty soft and delicate kind of a flavor it has. Not flavor, but experience. So the acidity in this one is pretty much missing. It's a very basic, simple kind of coffee. I, I can't see any, I can't find any acidity as such. Soft, very light, very, very light, very light body. This seems to be a little watery. That is what I want to say. Flavor is pretty muted, pretty, pretty muted. It's got nice acidity. Um, it seems to be a good coffee. Apart from the particular aftertaste, I think this seems to be a good coffee because the uh, flavors are more accentuated as against this one. And I'd go for this one because this is too, super diluted sort of. Yeah, for me this is the winner. This is EQ43? Uh -huh. Ta -da 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 -da. But there's a massive difference. There's, a, there's actually a massive difference to think about it. This one is watery. This one is really, it does not have a character as such. Like no acidity, no sweetness as such. It is just coffee flavored water kind of a thing, if you know what I mean. This one has got a lot of substance. It has a heavier body as compared to this one. Softer for sure. More acidity that has been pronounced acidity, I want to say. Not perceived, but pronounced acidity. And uh, I would drink this entire cup for sure. So EK43 is a winner. I'm so happy that the investments paid off. The face changer was probably because of the over extraction of the coffee. Because it got brewed for 4 minutes 30 seconds. Even this one was brewed for 4 minutes 15 seconds approximately. But this one was... You know the surprising, not surprising, but a... But a fun fact, we should have shown it from the top actually. So left one was the hand grinder that we were brewing and right one was the EK43, right? EK43 ka drip down was much faster as against the hand grinder. Because first I poured was hand grinder and according to that, then I went to EK43. So 15-20 seconds were added. So I knew this thing ki after this get extracted, 20 seconds add, this will get extracted. What happened was this got dripped down very fast. This was still there. And there's only one reason for that. That is... There you go. So fine migration. So fines got migrated with from this grinder right at the bottom and it clogged the paper filter. So it also increased the extraction time, uh, the brewing time. And uh, think about this, it increased the extraction time, it increased the brewing time. Still, this is not harsh or anything, it's still watery. So that's also because there were boulders in that cup. There were bigger, bigger uh, grind particles in that. So it's uneven extraction entirely and it's not something that you want you know even the color is actually now if you see the color is pretty different the grinder uh, how much does the grinder matter while you're brewing a cup of coffee now it's a very evident and clear case uh, again there will be a lot of people who might like this coffee but uh, the assumption that we can make and a short short assumption that we can make is that once i brewed again with the hand grinder in the same way in this hand in this hand, hand grinder if I brew it again the results are going to be very much different even this cup and this cup is going to be tasting different if I brew one more those all three cups are going to be different because grind size is not consistent it's uneven and you don't know what is extracting when all right as against EK43 the particles are really even more or less uh, much more even than this there's less fine migration there are less boulders so you got an average component on the grind size scale to be constant, all right? So if I brew two more cups from EK43, there is a high probability, I'm not saying a short, short thing, but a high probability, say 90% probability that all three cups are gonna be uh, 
the same just maybe being critical enough there will be like a difference here and there maybe but all these three are going to give the same experience of body as a team so that's why a grinder is super important so concluding on this thing uh the entire point was to show that how much a grinder matters grinder is the backbone of your home brewing kit or your cafe or your roasting operations grinder is the most important thing that you want to go for this was to show that what grinder brings to the table and you appreciate it more at times when you see when you are setting up a cafe you end up going for the best of the espresso machines and all those things you look out for that which is looking good which is a good result and all but grinder is a huge huge part of your setup you need to make sure that you're going for a good grinder which is got all these parameters that it's giving you a consistent grind size it is not heating up the coffee it has got those minute subtle changes that you can do on the dial knob and uh, yeah it gives you the volumes that you require this of course very obviously wouldn't do good in the commercial uh, space but uh, for traveling maybe it's great but if you want to set up a coffee bar or if you want to set up a espresso machine bar or something like that i think you need to invest on a good grind that was a point that you were trying to make uh, over a period of time it may not show the same results it will be very inconsistent inconsistent whereas this one will give you the same results over and over again and then you can tweak by and calculate based so you can't progress if you can't measure or rather if you, you can't progress if you don't measure that's that's very that's a very important key to the process of coffee so just recently i got to know that they are called subs and not subscribers so could you please increase the subs that we've got by liking sharing and subscribing thank you so much guys appreciate it cheers